Hi, this is Catherine Roseanne with Board Game Geek. I'm sitting here with Jeff Gagnier from Z-Man Games, and he's here to talk about Carcassonne, Over Hill and Dale. Yes. So, <laughs> very nice, very nice. Um, Carcassonne, Over Hill and Dale is uh, like in the past two years where we've had South Seas and then Gold Rush is the new t uh, standalone Carcassonne game. Um, which introduces a couple of new mechanics while, of course, uh, playing uh, with the classic Carcassonne experience. And Over Hill and Dale is a very uh, pastoral uh, game where, you know, fields and walking around. And walking around is actually something you get to do in this game. Oh, interesting. Um, so you actually get to move your pieces. You actually get to move your wanderers. And then yeah. the song starts in my end. Uh, <laughs> I'm a okay, um, so classic Carcassonne play. On your turn, you draw a tile, you place it wherever. On paths, you can place a meeple uh, and going right up to the wanderer. So here, if I were to place this here and I already had a wanderer, then I would be able to move him one, two, three, four, and then I would score four points. And the that's wanderers, how far he's walked. So that's how far he's walked, the number of tiles, and he stays there. So I'll be able to score that road further down the line or maybe walk some more. Um, if I were to add this, then I could start... No, actually, in this case, I'm closing off the road, and therefore he's not allowed to wander anymore. But really, that is... Would the, he then move to the last place and get no, one he, more point, or he just stays there? If I close a road, the wanderer stays there, and it's regular Carcassonne road scoring. Mm -hmm. um, it's only when you extend uh, the road, like with this style, where... Okay, let's cheat a little bit. No. There we go. I, no I, cheating, I, I no can't cheating. I bring myself <laughs> to cheat at Carcassonne. So here, by doing this, and then one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so that's an extra way to score. So you can points. actually go in the opposite direction. You have to you go, can go don't in the opposite towards. direction. The only thing you may not do is cross a junction, so you cannot move onto another road. Um, so that's the newest mechanic, which we've never really seen in the Carcassonne game. Game no. having uh, pieces move, with the exception of the flying machines that could actually send pieces randomly in a uh, given mm -hmm. direction. Um, I also noticed these lovely little uh, house tiles. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so on your turn, you can place a meeple as always. Yeah. You can move a wanderer. You may not do both. Or you can place one of these little barns. And the barns are, are going to be placed in fields. And there are no real restrictions, with the, uh, the exception that uh, no two barns may be uh, adjacent. And that includes oh, okay. the... Diagonals. That includes diagonals, Diag okay. So this would not be allowed. And how they score at the end of the game, I will look at the number of animals that are on the one tile and then each of the surrounding tiles. Okay, so similarly to uh, to uh, a cathedral or something, right? It's uh, the same kind of a scoring, everything around Monasteries, it. yeah, yes. Yeah, monasteries, yeah. yeah. We are looking at exactly the same nine tiles, but what we're looking for are for uh, animals. The animals that are nearby. And mm -hmm. you're going to score... Uh, a number of points per animal. Mm -hmm. So this would be five points? Uh, yes. Hopefully that's not the end of the game for green. Uh, and then the, the other thing where we can score points are the fields. And the fields are going to score a player two points per tile, much like cities. But they're also giving out little tokens. Crops. Little crops. We've got strawberries, pumpkins. Uh, sunflower, grain, apple, uh, and grain, and then the scarecrow. And basically, each of these tokens is going to be for one point at the end of the game. Uh, and if you have a set of five, because there are five uh, different, five different ones, then you score an extra five points. And why would you want scarecrows? The scarecrows are jokers. Oh, very nice. So that gives you that last little that, uh, yeah, yeah. edge. And if there's more than one person in the field, then they're distributed uh, by going with the, the player, that the current player, and then the next. And player, then and so until and so they're all gone. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that is the Carcassonne over Hill and Dale. Fantastic. Uh, really quickly explain because, yeah. I mean, it's Carcassonne, right? Right. <laughs> Thank you so much, though. How many players? Same as Carcassonne. Uh, so Carcassonne, two to five, uh, eight years and up. Uh, no, seven years and up, I'm sorry. Oh. And then 35 minutes. So. so Great little Depending, family of game, right? Course. Another great family game. Yeah, gotta love them. Thank right. you so much. Thank that you. is Carcassonne Overhill and Dale. Have a great day.